This is DIY News, and in tonight's story, we take you into the world of pom-poms. Our field correspondent has the story. Palming, or pom-pom making, is a hot and fluffy trend taking the internet by storm. DIYers and fashionistas alike are both going crazy for these balls of yarn. I started palming maybe in like the winter of 2019, something like that. I saw this really cool yarn um, at a craft store when I was out shopping for something else. Meet Aiden, rhymes with Maiden, a 31-year-old artist and DIY enthusiast living in West New York with a palm problem. And made a couple of pom-poms and then I strung them together and turned them into like a wall hanging and then I made a second one. Um, and I thought that was going to be the end of it. Crafting and other DIY hobbies saw a huge surge in popularity at the outset of the global stay-at-home time. But how much money are these enthusiasts willing to spend fueling their pom-pom habits? And are expensive pom-pom makers in various sizes and shapes really necessary for the casual palmer? POMZ investigates. Hi. You don't have to spend any money on pom-pom makers to get started. I'm going to show you this number of ways to make pom-poms with things laying around your house. Let's talk about supplies for a sec. You're going to need to buy yarn. That's why this is how to make pom-poms for almost no money. How crazy you want to go with colors and yarn types is up to you. If you invest money anywhere in this hobby, let it be in a good pair of fabric scissors. It'll save you blisters, hand cramps, and time. Your first lesson in pom-pom theory is this. You can make a pom-pom using two of any object as long as they are similar in size. I'm using paper towel rolls here. Start by wrapping your yarn around both rolls in a section that's about two to four inches wide, depending on how big you want the pom-pom to be. Slip a piece of thread around the section that you just wrapped, slipping it in between the rolls on each side and tightly tie the ends together. Pro tip, using wax thread to tie your pom-poms helps increase the pom's durability, but using yarn also works fine. Next, slide the yarn bundle off the rolls, and if your center tie feels loose, you can use another bit of thread or yarn to tie it tighter now that the rolls are gone. Then cut all the loops open, trim as much as you want, and roll to fluff. You can also use a felting needle to help you get some kind of unique shapes, but it's not necessary. The theory of two continues, only this time we're cutting up a cardboard box. Cut two circles that are about the same size from a cardboard box. Cut a notch out of each disc, and you'll use the notch to help you cut a hole in the center of each cardboard disc. Sandwich both discs together, and then wrap them both in yarn at the same time. Once wrapped, slip the scissors in between the cardboard discs and cut the yarn loops. Then you're going to slide a length of thread in between the discs and tie it around the bundle of yarn that's being held in the middle of the discs, and double knot it. Carefully pull the discs off the tied pom-pom, fluff, trim, shape, etc. If you consider yourself handy, this method's for you. Wrap the yarn around one hand. And then once you've got a good fistful wrapped, slip a length of thread or yarn under the yarn that's on your palm side, between your fingers, and then under the yarn. So editor's note, I made this much more difficult than it needs to be. So the real first thing that you're gonna need to do is to take the string that you're gonna tie around the center, thread that through your fingers. So you've got some coming through the front, and then you've got some coming through the back. Then, after you've got that done, that's when you're gonna go in with your yarn and start to wrap. So now you've already got this threaded through the back and through the front. Um, you can then carefully slide the yarn off of your hand and finish tying the thread with a double knot and just like we've done so far, cut the loops, fluff, trim, etc. Sorry, that was kind of forked up. This method is usually great for small pom-poms. <sighs> oh. 
wrap the yarn around the tines of a fork, and then thread your thread between the tines, tie it around the middle of the yarn bundle, remove fork, cut loops, fluff, trim, shape. You get it by now, right? It's slap chop time. You're gonna be slapping your troubles away. Stretch out your thread and then slap that yarn down. Tie around the middle and then chop, 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 chop. <clears throat> Bam, that's it. Gigantic pom pom. And sometimes when faced with a really daunting project, you'll find that you need to make a bunch of pom poms fast. Grab a chair, a table, or any other cooperating thing with two legs. Wrap the yarn around whatever two legs that you're using. At least 300 yards of yarn was used for this rainbow one. You're gonna start tying from the middle of the snake here, and then you're gonna tie another section about four inches from that center tie, and then you'll do another section a little longer than a few minutes later, and repeat throughout the whole snake, all the sections about four inches apart. And then, just like we've done before, cut the yarn in between each tie. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing for more DIY arts and crafts content. And as always, give this video a like and share this video with a friend. Hey, what are you... again? <laughs> I'm calling the palm leaves. I have a trade offer. I give you a tub full of pom-poms. You give me like, share, subscribe. I did what the YouTubers are supposed to do. I've filled a thing with other things. Subscribe. <laughs> do you want to help me count these later? I will, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> will you help me out? <laughs>